the alien stood frozen, its many limbs twitching in what its species would have considered a primal gesture of confusion. Before it, a large screen displayed the chaotic cacophony of humanity's galactic delegation meeting. Delegates argued over each other, their voices rising like an out-of-sync symphony, while others scribbled furiously on data pads, some outright ignoring the discussion to check their devices, and a handful seemed to be debating entirely different subjects altogether. Chirzik, the alien envoy of the Collective of One, felt something akin to a psychic headache forming. Asterisk, asterisk. This was diplomacy? Chirzik's species, the Kalura, operated as a unified hive mind, bound by shared thoughts and collective intent. For them, decisions were seamless. A problem was analyzed, a solution determined, and action taken, all within milliseconds. They could not fathom this, this chaotic entropy. Ambassador Chirzik, a human voice broke through its spiraling thoughts. Turning its many eyes, Chirzik focused on the speaker, an older human with graying hair and a sharp gaze that seemed to cut through the noise. I apologize for the lack of coordination. The Council's processes can be a bit overwhelming at first. Chirzik twitched. A bit? It took effort to suppress the broadcasting of its thoughts, a courtesy they extended to species not accustomed to telepathic intrusions. This, it finally managed, gesturing at the screen, is how decisions are made. Sometimes, the human replied, an edge of amusement in her tone. It's not always this loud, but you have to understand. We're not like you. We don't share a single mind or purpose. Chirzik couldn't hold back its bewilderment. How does your species survive? Thrive, even? Your inefficiency is staggering. The human ambassador chuckled softly, as if hearing a private joke. What you see as inefficiency, we see as strength. She gestured for Chirzik to follow her into a quieter corner of the meeting chamber. Let me explain. You and your species function as a single, unified entity. That's your strength. No internal dissent, no conflicting goals. You move like a finely tuned machine. But, she paused, her eyes narrowing slightly. It also makes you predictable. Chirzik stiffened at the implication. Predictable. Every decision you make is the result of a single collective analysis, right? Even if it's fast, it follows patterns, logical, calculated patterns. Humanity doesn't work that way. We're messy. Our ideas clash, our emotions interfere, and sometimes we're outright contradictory. But that's what makes us adaptable. The ambassador leaned in slightly, her voice lowering. When faced with a crisis, one of us might think of a solution no one else would have considered. Another might improve on it. Someone might even disagree entirely, pushing us to try something radically different. Our strength isn't in unity of thought, it's in diversity of thought. We thrive in chaos because chaos forces us to innovate. Chirzik absorbed this, its mind struggling to reconcile the words with the pandemonium it had witnessed. It had always thought of its species' unity as the ultimate evolutionary advantage. The idea that disunity could be a strength was almost offensive. Before it could formulate a response, the meeting chamber erupted in cheers. Chizik turned its gaze back to the screen. Somehow, amidst the shouting and disorder, the humans had reached a decision. Delegates were shaking hands, clapping each other on the back, and exchanging smiles. What just happened? Chizik asked, utterly baffled. The ambassador grinned. We agreed on a plan to counter the incoming Drax fleet. It's messy. It's bold, and it's probably a little dangerous, but that's humanity for you. Chirzik's many limbs twitched again, though this time it wasn't sure if it was from confusion or respect. Perhaps there was more to these humans than it had initially thought. Perhaps, Chirzik said carefully, there is merit in chaos after all. The hum of the chamber faded as Chirzik processed the ambassador's words. The humans had reached consensus. 
yet there was no sign of the mental synchronicity the Kailura considered essential for effective decision-making. It felt like watching random particles collide in a void, somehow arranging themselves into a functioning machine. It defied logic. How does such a process, Chirzik began, searching for the right term, ensure survival? Your species faces threats far beyond this Drax incursion. Surely there are limits to what your asterisk chaos asterisk can achieve. The ambassador folded her arms, leaning casually against the nearest console. I won't lie, Chirzik. There are times when the way we operate feels like flying blind through an asteroid field. But the beauty of humanity isn't in avoiding failure. It's in what happens after we fail. Chirzik's appendages twitched in confusion. After you fail. The ambassador's face shifted into a faint smile. We learn. We adapt. And, more often than not, we come back stronger. She gestured toward the screen where the last of the delegates were filing out of the chamber. Take this plan we just finalized. If it works, we'll have outmaneuvered one of the most dangerous fleets in the galaxy. If it doesn't, she shrugged. We'll adapt. Find another way. That's just who we are. The alien envoy stared its compound eyes reflecting the flickering lights of the chamber. Adaptation was not foreign to the Kailura. They had evolved across millennia to perfect their hive mind. But failure? That was an alien concept. To fail within the collective was to waste resources, time, and effort. It was unthinkable, yet these humans spoke of failure as if it were a part of their design. How will you counter the Drax fleet? Chirzik asked more curious now than doubtful. Surely a cohesive strategy would have served you better than... It glanced again at the empty chamber. This chaos. The ambassador smirked. Cohesion's overrated. You want to know our plan? It's simple. We're betting on unpredictability. The Drax are like you. They think in rigid structures, calculated steps. Their fleet operates as a single mind, just like the Collective. They'll anticipate strategies that make sense, so we're going to hit them with something that doesn't. The idea sent an uncomfortable ripple through Chirzik's neural network. You mean, illogical actions? The ambassador's grin widened. Exactly. Chirzik tilted its head, struggling to grasp the concept. And you believe this approach will work? The ambassador stood straighter, her confidence palpable. It's worked before. Think of it like a game of chess. Most species play to control the board, to follow patterns. We humans. She paused, tapping her temple with one finger. We play to asterisk break asterisk the patterns. Before Chirzik could respond, a sharp tone echoed through the chamber, signaling an incoming transmission. The ambassador turned toward a nearby console, her posture shifting into something more focused. This is Ambassador Hayes she said, her voice calm yet commanding. Report. A younger human's face appeared on the screen, his expression tense but determined. Ambassador, the Drax fleet has entered the system. They're holding position near the outer rim, just beyond scanner range. Hayes nodded, her eyes narrowing. Good, maintain our formation and execute phase one as planned. Keep me updated. The screen blinked off, and Hayes turned back to Chirzik, her demeanor as casual as it had been before. Well, looks like you're about to see humanity in action. Chirzik hesitated. And if this unpredictability fails? Hayes shrugged again, her calm unnerving. Then we'll fail brilliantly, and we'll figure out what to do next. The alien envoy couldn't decide if the human's confidence was inspiring or deeply unsettling. Either way, it realized the coming battle would be a test, not just of strategy, but of the very philosophy that defined their species. For the first time in its long existence, Chirzik felt something unfamiliar blooming within its shared consciousness, anticipation, the command bridge of the human flagship Asterisk. Resolute Asterisk hummed with tension as the fleet prepared for engagement. 
Rows of officers monitored their stations, issuing quick commands or adjusting controls with practiced precision. Chizik stood near the edge of the room, its sleek, many-limbed form deliberately out of the way. The humans moved with a kind of focused disorder, each individual acting independently, yet somehow complementing the actions of those around them. It was disorienting to watch. Admiral, the Drax fleet is shifting into an aggressive formation, an officer reported, his voice carrying across the bridge. Twelve capital ships, flanked by what appears to be at least 50 fighters. They're advancing steadily. Admiral Reyes, a broad-shouldered man with greying temples, leaned over the central display. The hollow map flickered with icons representing both the Drax and human fleets, the Drax ships forming a clean, spear-like formation aimed directly at the humans' seemingly haphazard arrangement. Classic Drax strategy, Reyes muttered, almost to himself. Predictable. Chizik's antennae twitched at the word. The alien stepped forward slightly, addressing the Admiral directly. Predictable, perhaps. But their formation is designed for overwhelming force. Even with your fleet, such an approach is formidable. Reyes glanced at Chirzik, his expression unreadable. Formidable, sure. But there's one thing the Drax always underestimate. Chirzik waited, its neural processors already running calculations. And that is? Reyes grinned, the edges of his mouth curling into what Chirzik had come to recognize as a distinctly human expression. Equal parts, confidence and defiance our capacity to not play fair. The alien envoy shifted uneasily. This plan of yours, what exactly does it entail? I still fail to see how disorganization is a viable tactic. Hayes, standing nearby, chimed in, her tone light but firm. It's not disorganization, it's misdirection. Watch closely, Chirzik, this is where the fun begins. A sudden burst of activity rippled through the bridge as Reyes issued his orders. All ships, begin phase one. Pull the asterisk resolute asterisk back slightly. Make it look like we're regrouping. Fighters, maintain defensive positions, but stagger your approach. I want them thinking we're hesitating. The bridge erupted into controlled chaos, officers relaying the commands to the fleet. Chirzik watched as the human ships began to shift, their formation becoming even more irregular. To an outsider, or as Chirzik suspected, to the Drax, it appeared as if the humans were unprepared, their fleet retreating into a scattered mess. They'll see this as weakness, Chirzik observed, its voice tinged with skepticism. Your formation lacks focus, they will exploit this. That's the point, Hayes replied with a smirk. On the hollow map, the Drax fleet surged forward, their spearhead formation tightening as they prepared to punch through the apparent gaps in the human lines. Chirzik could feel its collective consciousness buzzing with unease. Even if the humans were confident, the Drax formation was an overwhelming force. Now, Reyes said calmly, his voice cutting through the noise, execute phase two. The response was immediate. Hidden within the scattered formation, several human ships suddenly burst forward, their thrusters flaring as they accelerated straight toward the Drax formation. These ships, smaller and faster than the capital vessels, darted through the gaps in the Drax line, weaving between enemy fire with near reckless precision. What are they doing? Chirzik asked, its voice rising slightly. Creating chaos, Hayes answered, her eyes fixed on the display. The Drax spearhead faltered, their tightly packed formation, so effective in overwhelming static defenses, struggled to respond to the unexpected maneuver. The human ships darted in and out, targeting weak points in the Drax shields and sowing confusion among their ranks. And then came the second wave. From the outer edges of the human fleet, larger vessels began firing coordinated volleys, their shots timed perfectly to exploit the gaps created by the first wave. The Drax fleet, caught off guard, scrambled to adjust their formation, but the damage was already done. Chirzik stared at the unfolding battle, its neural pathways working over time to process what it was seeing. 
The humans were not fighting like a unified force. They were fighting like a storm, unpredictable, chaotic, and devastating. How did they... Chirzik trailed off, its voice almost inaudible. Hayes glanced at the alien envoy, her expression softening. They thought we'd fight like them, like you. Linear. Logical. But humans? We're messy. We think sideways when others think straight. Reyes barked another order, and the hollow map flared as the human fleet pressed its advantage. The Drax formation was crumbling, their tightly controlled lines breaking into disarray. They can't adapt, Chizik murmured, the realization dawning. Their unity. It is a strength, but also a limitation. Hayes nodded. Exactly. When the plan falls apart, they don't know what to do. But us? She smiled again, a glint of pride in her eyes. We're at our best when things fall apart. For the first time in its life, Chizik felt a flicker of envy. The humans, for all their chaos, had shown something extraordinary, a kind of resilience that no hive mind could replicate. As the battle unfolded, it became clear that the Drax would not recover. The humans' unpredictability had shattered their cohesion, and the once mighty spearhead formation was now a scattering of retreating ships. Chirzik turned to Hayes, its voice quieter now. Perhaps there is something we could learn from your species. Hayes chuckled softly. Stick around, Chirzik. We've got plenty of lessons to share. The battlefield fell silent as the last remnants of the Drax fleet fled into the void. On board the asterisk resolute asterisk, the tension eased, replaced by cheers and applause from the crew. Officers exchanged congratulatory pats on the back, and the hum of victory rippled through the bridge like a tangible force. Chirzik stood motionless near the hollow map, its many limbs twitching in thought. It had watched the humans dismantle the superior enemy fleet with nothing more than audacity, improvisation, and what the Kailura would have dismissed as asterisk chaos asterisk. And yet, it had worked. Not just worked. Succeeded brilliantly asterisk. Ambassador Hayes approached, her usual smirk replaced by a softer expression. Well, Chuzik, what do you think? Still convinced we're just a bunch of disorganized fools? The alien turned its compound eyes toward her, its voice measured but laced with something almost resembling admiration. I must admit, I underestimated your species. Your methods are reckless, inefficient, and utterly illogical. Hayes arched an eyebrow. And, and, Chirzik continued, they are astonishingly effective. The Drax were superior in numbers, discipline, and firepower, yet you unraveled them with unpredictability. Admiral Reyes joined them, his hands clasped behind his back. It's not just unpredictability, he said, his tone thoughtful. It's the way we lean into our differences. Every officer, every ship captain, every strategist out there had a unique perspective on how to execute the plan. Some of them probably did things I wouldn't have approved of. And yet you succeeded, Chizik said, its neural pathways buzzing with the implications. Your species does not require cohesion because your disunity breeds innovation. I see now why the Drax could not adapt to you. They were unified, but you were dynamic. Hayes grinned. That's one way to put it. For a moment, silence fell between them, broken only by the faint hum of the ship's systems. Chizik turned back to the hollow map, now displaying the scattered remains of the Drax fleet retreating beyond scanner range. There is something the Kailura could learn from you, it said finally. We value perfection, but we have forgotten the strength in imperfection, in failure. Perhaps that is why we have stagnated while your species continues to expand, despite your shortcomings. Hayes placed a hand on her hip, her smile softening. Funny thing is, we think of it the other way around sometimes. You look at us and see strength in our messiness, but we've spent centuries wishing for the kind of unity you have. Grass is always greener, I guess. Reyes chuckled at that, his deep voice resonating through the bridge. The truth is, Chirzik, 
No species has all the answers. That's why we're out here, learning from each other, sharing what works, and figuring out how to handle what doesn't. Chirzik considered this, its limbs folding inward in a gesture of contemplation. It had always believed the collective was the pinnacle of evolution, but witnessing humanity in action had shaken that belief. Perhaps perfection was not the end goal. Perhaps growth lay in the chaos, in the struggle, and in the constant push to adapt. I would request to remain with your delegation, Chirzik said suddenly, its voice steady but purposeful. There is much I wish to learn from your people. Perhaps there is even something that Kalura can offer in return. Hayes exchanged a glance with Rays, then extended her hand toward Chirzik. We'd be honored. Just be warned. Our way of doing things might drive you a little crazy. Chirzik hesitated, then reached out with a delicate limb to accept the gesture. I believe I am prepared to endure the madness. In their chaos, there was a spark, a kind of relentless drive to overcome, to improve, to rise above every obstacle.